I'm embarrassed all the time. I think everything is so embarrassing. It was like for me, it was, I was very much of a quiet kid, so I didn't socialize with a lot of people. So in my like I just want to quiet my mind and just like live instead of overthinking. Holding on to the past and just by like letting it go since it could really like haunt you by just ruining it. You are listening to Farewell, the Eulogy Project podcast. Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Conti, founding principal of New Design High School and podcast hero. Welcome to Farewell, the Eulogy Podcast. I'm in the room with some suspicious people. Suspiciously wonderful. If everyone could introduce themselves and their grade. Jacob Molina Jr. Elani Espinal Jr. Grace Stellencourt, I'm a junior. You guys are so quiet today. Talk louder. Uh, it's the end of the year. Time to make sense of everything you've learned in your entire life in one project, the eulogy project. It's a weird one. We're actually writing eulogies to ourselves about something we want to let go of, get over, dare I say, kill off. So it's maybe something that it hasn't uh, served us too well or maybe something that is like been haunting us. Okay. Yeah, you got it? Does anybody know what they're writing about yet? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, everyone? Who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? You got it. Jacob, you got it? No, No, you'll go last. Ariana, what are you writing about? Nice, nice, nice. Uh, have you always been a bit of a, f- my mom used to call me a firecracker. I think that was her. Nice. And how is the, uh, do you feel like it's improved over like the last? Right, right. I'm about to ask you the how you got over it. So nice. what it is. I was just w- listening to Chris Martin, head singer Coldplay. He was talking, he was performing at a concert and he was saying, this is, I like this deep. You ready? He was saying, anytime anybody comes at him, he just returns kindness back. It's like the most disarming thing possible. Whenever people come at him with any negativity, he just tries to be as nice back. I like that idea. Mm. Grace, Is my mic working? Grace, yeah. yeah. What do you What are you thinking about? This is is um, this a strange project. This one. Yeah. It is a little strange, right? Yeah, I'm. Not that strange. Yeah. I'm writing about um, like my fear of death when I was little and like how it affected me and how I've grown over that. Um, mm. I used to be really scared of like my mom dying when I was little. I like don't you know. would have like those like you'd go to yeah, bed at night I, and then. I now would like. I would, like, stay up and, like, just run to her room and start, like, sobbing, like, every day when I was, like, in elementary school. I was like, you're gonna die one day. Like, I can't, like, I can't accept that. And then as I've gotten older, I've, I think that death is a really beautiful thing and that um, it's not something to fear, but it's just something to accept and that I don't have those, like, feelings anymore and that I'm very welcoming of it. How, I'm so curious, how did you go from, like, not sleeping at three in the morning thinking about mom's death to like wanting to be a tell everyone what you're going to do in the Uh, future I want to do taxidermy um (laughs) uh, so like do you see when like 
there's like deer on like people's like walls. Yeah, like animals like that like have passed away. Yeah, I like they like stuff them, they, they throw them. Oh, to make them like stuff her. That's what they call it. Yeah, and I want to do that. And I just like, I over the years, like I was so young, so I never like experienced mm. anyone passing, so I didn't know how that felt. And then once I got older, just like it happened, so people around me like passed. And I realized that I never really had like a negative emotion to it. And I always thought and looked into that, and I realized that like, I didn't have negative emotions towards it because it's a natural thing and it's a beautiful thing that happens to everyone. Obviously there are situations where things happen, unfortunately, but like in natural ways of passing, there's like so much beauty in it. And I think that life should be praised and you shouldn't be sad about it when it happens to someone. It's beautiful, Grace. I, I, have, I have movies and book recommendations for you. Swag. Did you ever see, <laughs> and you probably never heard, you ever heard of this movie Flatliners? It's about a bunch of med students who would basically kill themselves with somebody there waiting and they would bring them back to life and everyone would see how long they could stay dead just to see what happened. There, there was a tunnel. Oh, uh, yeah, Jake, remember the tunnel? Yeah. Uh, and also read On Death and Dying by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Amazing. Alani, do you want to give away? So you want to probably give up on being so nice all the time, right? Yeah. Sweet, like stop being so sweet. So tiring. It's just exhausting, just draining, right? Smiling at people. Word. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna write about? My um, killing off the feeling of attachment. Oh, that's intense. Yeah, I feel like um, I've like suffered a lot emotionally trying to control situations and people and stuff so mm. i no longer feel that like i don't i don't try to force people in my life i don't try to force situations now i just truly try to make the best of what's present now like yeah. i can't i can't control it was there like one relationship in particular that i don't know i always say this like it's really good to go like i mean it's nice to have a nice day but it's mm. probably more healthy on like <coughs> learning stuff to just go out and get crushed right like fall deeply in love with somebody and have that person leave you, you're gonna learn so much about yourself. That's literally what happened to me. <laughs> We've all been there. Uh, what happened in the? Can we ask about the relationship? Or yeah, so I was in a relationship with a guy for like a year, but it was very complicated. And um, he, like, at first I didn't want him, and then he wanted me, and then when I started to pursue him back, it was just, it was like, you know. And so I tried to hold him a lot. I tried to keep him in my life for so mm. long. A and little longer than you should have. Yes. Yeah. And I ended up getting hurt. And honestly, at first when it happened, I would go to school and I would literally like sob. Like Grace was the only person that was there for me. Oh, good job, Grace. And so, um, <laughs> sorry, like it's my brain. But when you that dip back into that sadness <laughs> for a moment, right? I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> no, but I'm happy now. Like I love being single. Yeah. I think it's it's very like rewarding, like yeah. being by yourself and relearning yourself and what mm -hmm. you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely easier at times, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm very happy now. I'm so happy I went through that. Like at yeah. first, I was. happens to everybody i grew so much like at first i would be like oh i wish i never met him i would tell him i'd be like i wish i never met you like why would you do that to me like that was horrible mm. but now it's like i'm so happy i met him and i w i wish him nothing but the best honestly mm. i wish myself the best too yeah. like i know what i want now and i'm i do not want to be in a relationship i want to be by myself ever not ever just like exactly like yeah. i just i'm i really love being single right now yeah Wow, good job, man. Good job, Grace. <laughs> nah, that's funny. <laughs> All right, Jacob. I think you're like still trying to decide what to write right about. You got it? Yeah. Tell us, tell us, um, tell us. I would say because my biggest enemy this year was probably procrastination. Mm. Like waking up in the morning, you know, 
finishing assignments, like procrastination has been my biggest enemy this year. So, well, right now I'm still like learning and I'm trying to like get over it. And I've been learning because it's gotten a little bit better. But um, yeah, most definitely procrastination. That's what I'm on. This actually might be a good question for the crew. Why, why do we do that? Why do we procrastinate? We know it's bad for us. It reeks habit. Like, why do we do it? Honestly, um, I feel like procrastination is more like it's like how you say it. It's like somebody help me out. Like, I procrastinate, like, in the morning just by looking in the mirror for, like, 30 minutes. I don't know why. Just, but, like, brush my teeth, everything, just be in the mirror, just, you know, or I'll go on my phone for a little bit. Like, I procrastinate. It's weird. Like, it's a habit. It's a bad habit. It's a bad habit. For me, it's, like, an out of sight, out of mind thing. So if something's not physically, like, in front of me, like, telling me to do it, I, like, <laughs> won't do it in the moment. Oh, you, oh, Hickman, yeah. you have a, you, you're, you and your phone love each other. That's, an, that's a relationship you need to, I've always found that like when I'm not feeling good vibes that I just procrastinate, like I'm a little down, like, and I always like, I always end up spending more time procrastinating than actually doing the thing. That's what I've like learned, like just get it over with, attack it, get it done. Mm -hmm. So you like wreak havoc on your own confidence and all that other stuff that's mm -hmm. going on. Good one, bud. Good one. All right, it's time for the wisdom bomb round. Okay. Bombers. You ready? Don't call us that. I don't think you should call you. Uh, yeah. Wisdom bombs are these little nuggets of wisdom that you have. So what's your like piece of advice to others who might be suffering through what you kind of are going to write about in your eulogy? Mm. What's your piece of advice to somebody in your situation, Ariana? I like that idea of breathing too. Breathe, right? Yeah. It's worth it. It's worth it. Um, to all to all the procrastinators out there. Just, yeah. What's what's your advice? Uh, just get it done. Like I don't know. Get it done, because then in in the long run, like you just mess up everything. Your schedule, yeah. I also think we can become aware when we're closing off and opening up, right? You can uh -huh. see that closing, that procrastination. You just—it's a habit. Oh, Grace, for all those fearful of the next stage in life, what would you say to them? Um, I don't know. Just take everything very slowly. It may seem that like life is coming at you, but it's not. Yeah. Um, and it's something to enjoy. There's a positive in everything. So. Yeah. Lonnie, for all our wounded lovers out there. Um, that things happen, things don't happen to you, things happen for you. Mm. And if this didn't happen to me, I would not have the mind I have today. So I'm very happy. Type shit. Mm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. We'll cut that out. It's um, from the heart. He's it's from the, from the heart. heart. Speaking from the heart. Som think, sometimes we gotta drop an F bomb along with a wisdom bomb every once in a while. I think if it adds to what you're saying, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. 
my people, say goodbye. All right. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. I'm Dr. Scott Conti. This has been Farewell, the Eulogy Podcast. Farewell, farewell. You've been listening to Farewell, the Eulogy Project Podcast, a Spark Studio production.